Hey there everybody and welcome back. In this video I'm going to do a quick run through of the buildfire.com platform. Now this is again one of the next videos in the Codeless Application Development series. If you stumbled onto this video by accident, feel free to check out the playlist it's affiliated with and kind of jump back a couple to get caught up and then again check out the future videos as well. Just kind of covering how to build your own app uh, with codeless application development and then also what service to use. I mean, there's a ton of services out there all have different pricing So I try to set up free trials on all of them to show you what the interface is and to discuss pricing and all the features to see What's the best for you? So jumping straight in, please don't forget to like and subscribe and continue to check out the channel as I update my content regularly now jumping into Buildfire. so I have an incognito tab pulled up and when I close this we'll jump into the free trial that I just created, but to go over a couple of things here. So they have a pretty clean looking website and they have different app examples that you can view. Looks like they have a pretty robust platform, especially as far as all of the tracking and engagement features are concerned. And so you can scroll through here in your own time. I'll put a link in the description. We can look at their feature page. So you have a ton of different features here, but what I want to look at right now is pricing. So this platform has a really unique pricing plan. So Buildfire Plus is basically the talented design and development team is going to build the app for you. And this is going to be incredibly pricey, at least depending on whether or not you're an entrepreneur or you're an actual organization. So the pricing here, as you can see, the lowest package is $4,500. So it depends on what your actual financial needs are. But if you're just looking to kind of casually create an application on your own, then you would want to go to their app development platform. Now, this is still pretty pricey. I mean, if we're looking at annual or quarterly, um, so the lowest you could go would be quarterly as far as the frequency that you're making those payments. Uh, annually would be where you're going to get the greatest price break. But this is one of the more pricey platforms. That being said, you will notice that you have right out of the gate, you have the Apple and Android functionality, so you can publish both the Google Play and the Apple App Store. So a little bit of a benefit there, but you do not get the iPad and Android tablet functionality. Uh, not that that is make or break it for most, but just worth noting. Now, the one thing about this platform, they have an incredibly robust feature list. So if we're scrolling down, you'll see that we have Zapier integration for the middle tier and Zapier and upload custom functionality. But even if you just look under security and access, this is a pretty robust list to begin with. And this doesn't even take into account all of the additional features. So if we look under analytics, basic plan, you only get the download analytics. And the next plan, you get app feature, specific analytics, advanced push notification analytics, and user timeline. And then you also get segment analytics in the next tier you get a very large set of notification options here, like custom user segment push notifications and quite a few others. There are some additional admin seat add-ons that you have, consultation services available in the highest paid tier, enterprise features, and then premium plugins. You'll see everything from task management, file manager, free text questionnaire, but this list, I'll just continue to scroll down. Again, all I can say is this is an incredibly robust list. You'll see your push notification limit per plan. You'll see your active devices, so total number of users, then your storage, and your bandwidth per month. So again, very, very, very robust set of features here, but you are definitely going to pay for it. Now we'll go into my free trial. So I set this up before the video. I was pretty simple, just clicked a general template when you click sign up in their website. And then you, you make sure that you specify it's a trial. I did not need to enter in a credit card. I clicked a sample template, which I believe you can change. And then I typed in basic information, email, phone number, sample password, etc. Now this is the dashboard it lands you in. So out of all the platforms, I will say that initial impression is not exactly what I was expecting, but overall definitely don't really have any complaints so far. It does look like they're really trying to push you to jump into their pro services. So we're gonna jump to the home screen, which is where you're gonna see your application on the right. Again, I haven't made any edits to this. So you'll have the scroll menu right here. And then you can check out all of the 
items in each specific menu when you click on it. So if you click on desserts, etc., you would be able to see your sub menu items, so to speak. You have your sidebar here, and then you have your nav bar down here. So you'll see all of these different options when you click on the nav bar. So we will click on home screen again to go back to the home. And we will see here you have categories. So everything here in this menu is going to correspond to something over here. So if we click back, and I'm just going to try to get back to the home page on the app itself. So on the home page, you'll see you have breakfast, snacks, desserts, pastries. That references these menu items up here. And you can check analytics, edit, and delete those pages if you wanted to. So in breakfast, for example, if we want to see what's in there, you'll see sushi easy recipe, calabasa soup, and all of the individual pages. And you can click edit on the page and edit the options that are on that page here. You also have the option to change the design. So maybe you decide, I don't really like these menu items, they're too big. I want to go to more of like a pill shaped menu item or maybe these smaller circles you can change here. You have the ability to adjust security options here if you need to. You can earn money from in-app purchases. You have your little upgrade button down here and then the little tutorial here. Again, I'm on a free trial, so there are going to be some limitations. And then you have what appears to be a pretty robust series of different analytics menus. Um, again, as I haven't published this and I'm on a free tier, I doubt that I'm going to have a whole lot I can view, but it does look like they have quite a bit here as well. So next up, we're going to go to app components. You'll notice there are quite a few different menu bars here. So my features is first, this is what's essentially currently on the app. So you'll see, for example, if I go to the breakfast menu, this is the calabasa soup, which is right here. And this is a folder. You have a folder. So you'll see the little sub menu of what it is. So right here is home and it's time release content. You'll see what contact us is, etc. So you'll see all of these options. So you can delete the option and it'll disappear from the application. So for example, I will go ahead and I'll just click delete on this calabasa soup. And then we can remove that. And then when you're going up here, you can again scroll through, kind of see where everything is. So that was just a feature that was removed. And if we wanted to, let's just say delete this page. So you can edit the page by clicking on it. You'll see that you have all of your content here. You can add a feature. You can change, for example, we can go here and type in test. And you'll see it changes over here. You can change your image, the speed, and additional design options here. But if we wanted to go to our home page, and let's just say we wanted to delete this. So we would want to find the page that corresponds to where this item is located. So let's just say that's breakfast. You'll notice that Calabasa soup was deleted. So we'll delete the plugin from the category and essentially it's not going to be present on the app anymore. And then maybe we want to make any additional changes, you can edit those here. So next up, we're going to go here to Marketplace and browse for new features, just to show you what you can essentially have access to. So you have this massive Marketplace where you can find all of these additional features to add, and you can just click Try right here. And this page scrolls down so you can see there's quite a bit of options, loyalty notes, you can see people by build fire. So this is a pretty massive list of additional features, for example, Stripe for checkout, PayPal checkout. So it's a pretty big list. Now we will go to the side menu because maybe we want to make some edits here. So this is the side menu, which is what I showed you at the beginning of the video. So you can adjust things here pretty simply by dragging and dropping and it'll change the order. You can add new and existing features and then you can enable uh, the secured features here. I don't think I have access to that right now. You can also change the orientation of where the menu bar goes, floating, 
transparency. So all these changes you can sh make adjustments to, so you can change it whether it's an icon or an image. So most of these windows have a design, and then you can adjust the language as well and change any of these features here. Then we are going to go to the nav bar, which is at the very bottom. So you'll see that we have the featured blog post, videos, and contact us. So maybe we want to delete contact us. You'll see that now we only have three options. So this is one of those edits that appears to be in real time. Unfortunately, the one of the things that I've already started to notice is when you're changing features like I was just doing, like deleting the Calabasa soup page, it doesn't always appear to be like it's in real time when it's removing it. Um, so that can be a little confusing, but most of these applications uh, or app builders, you have the ability to kind of try it in real time as you're making it. So I wouldn't really hold that against them, especially as I'm kind of new to the platform myself. Um, it's just more of like a usability thing. You have the ability here to add intro slides and you can, you'd have to upgrade to access this feature. So there's only so much I can show you from here. And that covers all of the app components. So you have branding and media library that you can look through. So you can see header text and all of these different button options. You can see your app icon for the Android and iOS platforms, your app name, your app loading screen, all these options you can make adjustments to if you wanted and kind of change the theme. And then you have your media library where you can add in your images. Security options, you also have the e-commerce credit card and purchase systems that you can go through. Most of these look like they require an upgrade. And then your notifications, so analytics, geofence, um, so you have all the notification options, and then the user management and tagging. So most of these would require an upgrade, unfortunately, but when you sign up for your trial, you can view those tutorials um, there. And then again, same thing with analytics. You'll have your analytics page here. Um, since this is a trial, there's not going to be anything. And then all of these advanced options here. So you have your API keys, app publishing. So when you get into APIs, third-party integration, things like that, that's definitely gonna be much more technical. So that's really something that is going to be uh, probably a more technical application with a, a lot more functionality. Uh, and again, it does look like kind of a premium service that you will definitely be paying for here. So I'll try to finish up the video by just kind of walking you through, again, the application. You have your app builder on the left with all of the design components and features. And then on the right, you have what's supposed to be the real time view when you're making changes. For example, if I decided I wanted to delete breakfast and snacks and maybe even dessert you'll see those changes are being reflected in real time here. And you'll see I've already changed the theme as there's now a pinkish color. So all those changes that I was making on the previous pages are showing here in this editor in real time. And then publishing, we would just click this publish button here and kind of walk through the prompts. Um, so if you have any questions on this platform, I know this was a pretty quick run through, but there's only so much you can cover uh, without making the video too long. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. And as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe and check back into the video series and in the channel for new content. I'll see you all in the next video.